What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Chatting Comics with Space Chimp Comics. I'm Dan. And I'm John. And uh, today we're going to kind of talk about the um, origin of our comic books in a way. So Tales from Toxic Pond, it's a standalone, uh, self-contained story in each episode, uh, each, I almost called it an episode also, each issue, um, different stories in each issue, different artists, not really a whole lot of recurring characters. Right. Now, how would you classify it? It's not always horror. No. There's a little sci-fi, right? Mm -hmm. There's a little, like, I hate the word fantasy because this isn't about, like, sword and sorcery type stuff. Right. But there aren't any hobbits in the no, issues yet. But they're, like, surreal, Twilight Zone-ish, maybe? Yeah, surrealism, Twilight Zone. It's like A24 kind of stuff. Oh, I like you know, that. Where it's like... Um, with the A24 of comics. The A24 of comics. That's how we're going to start you know, rebranding ourselves. <laughs> maybe we'll start, you know, getting, uh, right. getting big like there that. You know, you never know. Um, yeah, sci-fi, cosmic horror, a little bit of macabre. You know, it's just a hodgepodge of stuff. And why we kind of went, like, in this route, really, was because we both love horror anthology movies, mm. right? Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, for me, it started, be again, with my dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was loved Dracula. I mean, my dad loved anything to do with Dracula. He loved it so much that he would have dreams about Dracula. And he used to sleep with a, a crucifix under his pillow in real life. Just because, you know. Bela Lugosi or Christopher Lee? Christopher Lee. Okay. I mean, he respected the Bela Lugosi. You know, it's the original. It's the, the OG. OG. Sure. You know? But Christopher, I mean, who did Dracula better than Christopher Lee? I mean, some would argue Bela Lugosi. <sighs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be one of those people. I never drink. Fine. I mean, come on. <laughs> right. Christopher Lee was like menacing. Yeah, yeah. You know, sure. like Bela Lugosi was more charming. I love the um, what's his name? You know, Gary Oldman. Oh yeah, Dracula that's a great too, movie. And, uh, yeah, awesome. But um, so then I don't know when I discovered them, um, but horror anthologies, mm -hmm. Amicus Productions, right, oh, yeah. was like the the main company. They came out with so many great movies, and my favorite of them, Dan, is from Beyond the Grave. Yeah. With Peter Cushing as the shopkeeper, right? The antiques and things, and anytime anybody tries to cheat him, something bad happens right. to the, with, with you know with the item which they bought. Now, a real funny story with this. At least I think it's funny. Hopefully, you think it's funny. Uh, but it was rated R the movie, mm -hmm. and I, I was like twelve or eleven or something. I don't know, ten. And so my parents dropped me and my buddy off. I think it was like Stefan Calendar dropped us off at uh, the uh, Allerton Avenue movie theater in the Bronx, about okay. 20 minutes from home. And we had to find an adult couple to buy our tickets. We would give them the money, and they would buy our tickets. So it was this, like, <laughs> young couple, you know, they go in. And for some stupid reason, like, and, you know, he was like, sure, yeah, come on. We sat right next to him and his girlfriend for the whole movie, me and my buddy. I don't well, they know were why. your pseudo, you know, guardians. I guess we felt hours. obligated, but like we didn't pay him any money to like babysit us. Right. But um, but that's I saw from Beyond the Grave there, and wow. uh, that movie just freaked me out. I mean, that one. I mean, there are so many great Amicus ones. Mm -hmm. um, Asylum, yeah, is a great one, and like Peter Cushing's in almost all of these, right? Right. The story in Asylum with like Peter Cushing scared the bejesus out of me. Which one? He's um, an old German tailor. Oh, yeah, I remember that story. And his yeah, son yeah. has died. Right. And he's creating a suit. And that, man, when he puts the suit on the son, yeah. and I mean, this isn't a spoiler, right? This is like... It's a 50-year-old movie. It's 50 years ago. And the son comes to life. I mean, that really, that, I mean, that gave me nightmares. Yeah, I remember watching that with you. I was, you know, probably in my late 20s, so it didn't give me nightmares, <laughs> but, it, right. but it, it did kind of give me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. It's funny to see movies that were rated R back then before PG-13 was a thing. Yes, exactly. Because, you know? I mean, that's it's not it's, an R-rated movie. That's a PG movie today. It's a PG movie, yeah. You know? Yeah, there's there's no language or anything like that. So do you have a favorite uh, amicus or a favorite horror anthology? From Beyond the Grave is my favorite amicus film also, too. But for me, when we're talking anthologies, the conversation begins and ends with Twilight Zone. Oh, yeah. Well, that's... I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm wearing the shirt. We have Twilight Zone you know, variant covers for the comic books. To me, Rod Serling was so ahead of his time. He was such a genius, yeah. such an incredible writer to uh, to write social commentary under the mask of fantasy or sci-fi and just feed it to the masses and create these incredible stories with beautiful cinematography, you know, memorable characters and unbelievable plot twists. So tight. And um, you know what's amazing about that show is that it still stands up all these years later, number yeah. one. But number two, we had this conversation over the Christmas break recently 
every time you watch a Twilight Zone marathon, you discover a new one that you've you never seen before. You discover a new one. I, Dan, I have been watching Twilight Zones for over fifty years. I'm right. fifty-eight years old. I've been you know watching Twilight Zone with my mom when I was like a little kid. Yeah. And just this year, we saw an episode, and with I Donald texted Pleasance. you. Right. And you had never seen it either. Right. The old professor. Right? And, uh, uh, yeah, it's an know. episode with uh, with Donald Pleasance uh, from uh, the Halloween films. That's right. Uh, I think it was one of his first American roles. Oh, wow. And he plays like an aging professor that feels like um, he's he hasn't worthless. made a difference he has, yeah. and he's worthless and he's exactly. being replaced. Only to discover the true, you know, impact he's had on so many lives right. over the course of so many years. It was like, it's a wonderful life. You know, meets you know sci-fi or yeah uh, in in twenty two minutes runtime right you know? and and that's that was a, a theme that uh, Rod Sterling would revisit time and again is feeling like you're you have no impact on the world no legacy you know what is your legacy right. um, yeah just just incredible writing beautiful characters and so many amazing plot twists so real quick would you have a favorite Twilight Zone episode yeah um, a passage for trumpet actually became Jack my favorite with Jack Klugman. It's just such an amazing episode. Yeah. You know, there's a scene where he encounters the angel Gabriel and he's playing right. his, his horn. And it's just such a beautiful episode. And it's another one of the same ep- similar episodes with that theme. Right. But he feels feel like, like his life hasn't been... He, he like hasn't lived to his full potential. And, right. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I watched that episode and I, I cried. And I, in the morning, I, I rewatched it with my wife. And she cried. Oh, wow. And uh, it just had such a lasting impact on, on the both of us. Yeah. I'm, I'm like partial to the Night of the Meek. Yeah, Art Carney is like Santa Claus, the drunken Santa Claus who, for one night, is able to actually be Santa Claus, yeah. and uh, you know that's a great, great um, episode. So you know, Dan, uh, horror anthologies, uh, you know, were big in the '70s, and then they kind of died out for a long time. Mm-hmm. But they're kind of making a little bit of like a comeback. Black Mirror, oh yeah, the VHS movies, right? Trick or Treat, yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So listen, let us know if you have a favorite horror anthology in the notes below and follow us at SpaceChimpComics.com and keep an eye out for the next issue of Tales from Toxic Pond. Yep, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified of all future videos. Again, I'm Dan. And I'm John. And, and we've, we've been, been chatting, chatting comics. comics. We're done! Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. That's harder than it looks. <laughs> That's what she said.